Thanks. I think it was a lovely idea of you, Jutta Almerdinger, because it expands my journalist brain and my journalist bubble to new heights. Yes. And uh, it was like oxygen. So it's uh, really great. Ladies and gentlemen, dear Jutta Almerdinger, dear Alex Chen, dear Raj Chetty, dear members of the ASK Award Commission, are there two American dreams? The one, still a beautiful dream of creating and inventing, of a unique business model which transforms one's own biography into a breathtaking success story. What was once the dishwasher is now the garage nerd, the hippie billionaire, the digital guru. Then there is the other dream, the darker dream of failure, of unfulfilled talent and impotent ambition because you were born on the wrong side of the tracks. To pronounce the American dream dead sounds almost heretical, for what would the USA be without its dream, without its pursuit of happiness? Or expressed more prosaically, what has happened to social mobility in one of the richest and most powerful societies in the world? The natural assumption that children born today will automatically inherit a better world than their parents has long since lost its validity. A glance back into the past serves to illustrate this fact. In 1940, 92% of children born into an average American family earned more at the age of 30 than their parents had at the same age. Some 40 years later, only half of children born would eventually earn more than their parents. And here in Germany, the nightmare of downward social mobility has haunted the middle class for many years, as has the erosion of the former certainty that achievement is rewarded, or that the next generation will be as well off or even better off than the present one. Social mobility, a political, economic, cultural, and moral imperative. The studies on social mobility conducted by Raj Chetty have thrust center stage a highly gifted man who is simultaneously an economist of international renown, an inquisitive detective, and a practical humanist who has dedicated himself to the betterment of humankind. His is a social science that seeks to break down, analyze, and categorize our societal condition, and also serves to improve the foundations of political decision-making. A social science that seeks to highlight and explain the phenomenon of lost Einsteins, of why black males, even from affluent families, can expect to earn lower incomes than their white counterparts from poorer families. How a more upmarket postal code can dramatically enhance the future prospects of a child. Or why socio-economic class does not explain everything. An approach which is so much more promising than mere quantification. And I'd like to even claim that Chetty's work highlights not only the prognostic potential, but also the utopian potential of big data, but more of that later. First, a few biographical details charting Professor Chetty's trajectory towards his breakthrough in social research. He was born 1979 in New Delhi to two academics. Chetty's mother, and this is important for his biography, was contrary to tradition, able to attend college and study. And this shaped the young boy, as did his observations of the extreme poverty prevailing in India. At the age of nine, his family emigrated to the United States, which marked the beginning of a meteoric rise. At the age of only 24, he was awarded his doctorate at Harvard, the focus of his studies, 
the economic theory of public spending, tax, education, housing policies, and unemployment insurance. Appointed to Harvard as the youngest professor in the university's history, he went on to accept posts in Berkeley and Stanford before returning to Harvard. Already a rising star, he was by this time also a highly prolific publicist who ranked, who ranked among the most cited economists in the US and was hailed as, quote, one of the international bright young things by the New York Times and The Economist as early as 2008. And let us not forget, that was a time when the economic sciences were plunged into crisis as well as the financial markets. A much, as a much sought after consultant, he has advised and continues to advise the highest echelons of politics, such as the US Congressional Budget Office. And yes, his colleagues have been quoted as predicting that the question with Raj is not if he wins the Nobel Prize, but when. And here a word of congratulations to the award committee of the Angela and Shukai so Social Science Award. They clearly possess astonishing prescience when bestowing high academic honors. In 2015, they awarded the prize to the development economist Esther Duflo, who is now the youngest ever economics Nobel, Nobel laureate. A new generation is taking the stage. What do both prize winners have in common, may I quote Esther Duflo, to ensure that the struggle against poverty is based on scientific foundations. Perhaps the latest Nobel Award is a good omen for the winner of our prize today, Raj Chetty. Opportunity Insights is the name of his institute in Harvard. Broadly speaking, it analyzes and deconstructs the American dream in order to piece it together again. The project conducts longitudinal research into place, child poverty, education, and housing policies. Here, a social science is deployed in the service of solving rather than merely describing problems. With the aid of now publicly accessible big data, the conditions of social mobility are analyzed from various perspectives and distilled into practical policy recommendations on a local, regional, and national level. In addition, Chetty's approach to research facilitates the evaluation of his data sets by other academics, by politicians, by the public in general. Up until a decade ago, this was uncharted territory. But Raj Chetty and his colleagues were granted access to something previously denied to economists and researchers, anonymized tax records spanning a period of several decades. The focus of their study were incomes across several generations of people adjusted for welfare benefits and inflation. And this in a time when computers were becoming ever more sophisticated and powerful, enabling millions of data points to be collated and scientifically systematized. A breakthrough, but also a shock and ultimately a challenge. Prior to this pioneering study, it had not been possible to statistically monitor the development of families or municipalities on a long-term basis. 1.4 billion tax and social insurance records, the raw material of knowledge. As a consequence, Chetty created a tool in 2013 with a delightfully old school name, the Opportunity Atlas. Lovely. which was to become a kind of Bible for researchers, local politicians, and activists in their practical uh, work. It's a treasure trove of information, and it also constitutes a valuable tool for journalists like myself. It is possible, it is easy, in fact, to establish uh, correlations or to identify surprising outcomes or simply start a much needed investigation. I'll give you an example. Miners in one municipality are giving birth to far more babies than in a neighborhood 30 kilometers away. What's going on here? Poor teachers? 
too few jobs for young people, no cultural network? What is the position regarding racial segregation? How could targeted policies make a difference and alleviate the situation? Big data enable a picture of the correlations and causes to be compiled and highlight factors either fostering or hindering social mobility. How good are the local schools and infrastructure? Why are ghettos expanding? Would generous housing vouchers be helpful? Or would a move to a better area be the ticket to a better future? Chetty's studies, published in rapid succession, shine a searing spotlight onto societal realities in the US and obviate the need to trek through a jungle of raw data in order to understand modern society. And once again, we return to an issue which has inspired Chetty throughout his own biography, measuring the quality of teachers and their impact on the student's future, combined with studies on how kindergarten influences what a person earns in later life. He writes very persuasively about an experiment based on the data from 2.5 million school pupils. Excellent elementary school teachers wield a direct impact on a child's future, be it in terms of school grades, unwanted teenage pregnancies, subsequent educational qualifications, or earning potential. Student, groups, uh, student year groups are now rendered comparable, excluding coincidence and identifying causality. Consequently, Raj Chetty takes a rather pragmatic approach to teaching by removing the worst teachers, or to use the jargon, the low value added of VA teachers. The educational standards and outcomes of children can be improved quantifiably as manifested on school report cards or paychecks. Research we could certainly use in Germany. Take inequality, for example. Recently, the public were once again shocked to learn that according to a study by the German Welfare Association, the Paritätischer Gesamtverband, 22.3% of children born in Germany live in poverty. Hardest hit are single parents or families with three or more children. The study revealed, for example, that a low-income couple with one child has 44 euro a month to spend on toys, club fees, visits to the zoo, or just buying ice cream on a school trip, against a national average of 123 euro. And the richest households spend some 275 euro each month. The source, of course, is the Paritätische Wohlfahrtverband, we're talking about 44 to 123 to 275. Such narratives provoke instant indignation and act like a dampener on the public mood of the country. Child poverty in the world's leading or second leading <laughs> export nation. What a shameful disgrace. Political parties, institutions, not to mention most citizens, are firmly convinced that everyone, regardless of background, should be afforded the same opportunities. It is like an article of faith, like being for world peace. Equal opportunities and social justice are among the moral imperatives, imperatives underpinning a liberal, democratic and growth-orientated society. Yet how utopian these ideas seem to have become. So to return to the headlines on child poverty in Germany, what happens? The inevitable media circus goes into overdrive. Politicians and committed citizens react by proposing urgent countermeasures or simply with cries of outrage. This mood of righteous indignation ignites a flurry of TV shows and pious speeches as for a few moments a stark social reality is thrust into the glare of the public gaze before, predictably, darkness falls again. What lies behind such short-lived 
public scrutiny. I ask myself from year to year. One reason could be that social sciences examine, enumerate, and statistically document only a small fragment of reality. Whereas one study sets out to determine how many children live in poverty, another seeks to identify a correlation between school leaving qualifications and youth criminality. Or a study is made of the impact of inherited wealth, whilst another quantifies the number of early school leavers and drug addicts. My point is, we are continually better informed, but not necessarily any wiser. We know more than previous generations, but this does not make us any smarter or more equitable in our actions. Too rarely do we harness our knowledge to compile a holistic picture of society. We don't join the dots, as it were. We overlook the fact that data and statistics also contain statements about human dignity. And this is precisely what Raj Shetty's groundbreaking approach inspires. He invites us to join the dots. When I was a student, a long time ago, sociology was an interdisciplinary field, gathering and evaluating data and their correlation with psychology, economics and culture reflected the conditions on which further progress could be accomplished. I am convinced that the economist Raj Chetty harbors this ambition. He wants to literally put society on the record and identify any useful connections. Anything that helps is his rather prosaic creed. It is the great mission of our age and I'm also looking at Alex Chen and his father and your speech, which you just held. How to reinvigorate values such as freedom, equality, and fraternity, which we perceive as universal. How to reinforce social cohesion. How to strengthen social bonds. How to overcome this confounded divide, which, like a virus, has infected our so enlightened Western democracies, be it in the USA, Great Britain, or even here in Germany. Western societies have undergone a rapid transformation in the wake of digitization and globalization, developments which politics have been unable to keep pace with. Too often are the action and thinking of those in power shaped by the exigencies of the electoral cycle, leaving long-term reform to be sacrificed on the altar of the short-term retention of power. It must dismay decent, enlightened people to discover that the inspirational concept of equality on which the American dream was founded has revealed itself to be fake social mobility, the vehicle to a better life is becoming derailed. From region to region, and even in one and the same city, privilege and disadvantage are distributed extremely unevenly. The goal of ensuring a more socially equitable distribution is, of course, an aspiration shared by all Democrats. Our increasing Social immobility is an acknowledged source of mounting anxiety, as are its inevitable political ramification. Growing polarization is, in my opinion, one consequence. The undermining and insecurity of the middle class is another. However, I am not merely concerned with expanding the economy or boosting incomes, welfare benefits, educational opportunities, and levels of contentment. I also harbor moral concepts of how a free society should forge the ideal starting conditions for its citizens. And I perceive unequal opportunity as a defeat, as a rejection of our civilizational norms. Thanks to Chetty, social research can now be scientifically unimpeachable, empirically robust, 
and politically effective, and in the process avoid the treacherous pitfalls of ideology and party politics. Or, as The Atlantic recently concluded, Chetty has established big data as a moral force in the American debate. We now urgently require fresh initiatives and impetus, and I fervently wish that Raj Chetty's methodology and approach were in some way infectious. Big data and state-of-the-art supercomputers have transformed economic theory and rendered it able to perform critical analysis again, untainted by partisan interests. In my estimation, this appears to be the dynamic and indeed the raison d'etre underlying this wonderful prize. The ASK Social Science Award seeks to honor the political and practical relevance of sociological studies. The dream of progress shared not only in America is that each of us, regardless of background or origin, can achieve anything. Upward mobility is attainable. Freedom and self-fulfillment are available to everybody. Political and economic power is not confined to the privileged few. So my message to you, to the scientific community, be critical, be courageous, be optimistic, let us celebrate the fact that society can now benefit from the systematic analysis of big data and from the firm conviction that our social ills are there to be overcome and tackled together in a coordinated strategy. Raj Chetty has infused fresh life into the moribund American dream.